This is the seventh video in the Edexcel C3 revision tutorial series. Today we will be looking at more calculations, this time for gas volumes. In this video we will look at what we mean by a volume of one mole of gas. We will look at molar volume and balanced equations in calculations and we will revisit Avogadro's law which we have looked at previously. In the previous video on working out concentrations we looked at volume. As a quick reminder in chemistry we tend to use centimetre cubed and decimetre cubed. Here we have one centimetre cubed, here we have one decimetre cubed or 1000 centimetres cubed. You must make sure that you can convert between the two. As we looked at in the concentrations and moles video, we came across Avogadro's constant. Avogadro's constant was that there was 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles in one mole of any substance. We can use this in order to work out volumes using Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law states that one mole of any gas at room temperature, which we take to be 25 degrees C, and at normal atmospheric pressure, which is one atmosphere, will have a volume of 24 dm cubed. This is true for most gases and is called the molar volume of a gas. This means that one mole of a gas at room temperature and pressure will occupy that volume of 24 dm cubed. I'm going to put five questions onto the video now. I'm going to pause the video after they appear and have a go at answering them. Here they are now. So, in order to work out the volume of two moles of oxygen, we're going to presume this is at room temperature and at room pressure. So therefore, we need to do 2 times 24, giving us 48 decimeters cubed. For the next question, we need to do 0.25 moles of our carbon dioxide times by our 24. This gives us 6 dm cubed. For the next question, we need to do this in reverse. So we know that one mole of nitrogen would occupy 24 dm cubed. But we do not have 24 dm cubed, we only have 8 dm cubed. So we need to do our 8 divided by our 24, which gives us 0.3 recurring moles. For the next question, we need to go back to our moles equals mass over MR. We are being asked for the volume of 80 grams of argon. If we look up argon in the periodic table, we will find that it has an MR of 40. In order to work out our volume, we need to work out our moles. So we will do moles equals our mass of 80 over our 40, which is the MR of argon, giving us 2 moles, 80 divided by 40. We now have our moles of argon, which is 2, so we can work out the volume doing 2 times 24 to give us a volume of 48 dm cubed. Finally, we have question 5, which is the most complicated question that we have here. So we have a balloon that contains 12 decimeters cubed of carbon dioxide. What is the mass of this much CO2? The first thing we need to do is work out our number of moles. So we've got our 12 dm cubed and we know that one mole would occupy 24 dm cubed. So 12 dm cubed would be 0.5 moles. In order to then work out our mass, we need to do our moles times by our MR of carbon dioxide. In order to work out our MR, we need to look up the molecular mass of both carbon and oxygen. Carbon, which is 12, and oxygen, which is 16. So we'll do 12 plus 16 times 2, giving us an MR of 44. Finally, we can work out our mass by doing our moles 
times by our MR, giving us a mass of 22 grams. We will now look at how to calculate the volume of a product in a reaction. In order to calculate the volume of a product, we need to work out the ratios between the reactants and the products. So, 2 grams of H2 has a volume of 24 dm cubed, 32 grams of O2 has a volume of 24 dm cubed, and 44 grams of CO2 has a volume of 24 dm cubed. When water is electrolyzed, it breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen. Here is our reaction here, 2H2O goes to 2H2 plus O2. What volume of hydrogen is produced by the electrolysis of 6 grams of water? In order to work this out, we first need to work out the MR for each part of the reaction. The MR of H2O is 18 and the MR of H2 is 2. We then divide both by the MR of the known amount. In this case, we know that we're electrolyzing 6 grams of water, so we're going to divide both sides by 18. This gives us a value of 1 for the H2O and a value of 0 0.1 for the MR of the H2. We then times both of these by our volume in grams. So this time we're going to times them by 6 grams, giving us a mass for our H2O of 6 and a mass of our hydrogen gas, our H2, of 0 0.66. In order to then work out our volume, we will use the formula volume equals mass over MR times by 24. This is a rearrangement of the equation from earlier. So we will do our 0 0.66 grams divided by 2 times 24 to give us a volume of hydrogen gas of 7.92 dm cubed. When we are calculating volumes of gases in a gaseous reaction, we don't even need to convert moles and masses. We can just use the volumes. So here we've got the reaction for the Haber cycle, which we will look at more in the next video. N2 gas plus 3H2 gas goes to 2NH3 gas. This is ammonia gas being formed. One mole of nitrogen gas combines with three moles of hydrogen gas to form two moles of ammonia gas. We can see this from the equation where we have no number before the nitrogen, a three before the hydrogen and a two before the ammonia. This means that one volume of nitrogen reacts with three volumes of hydrogen to produce two volumes of ammonia. So a question might be, for how much hydrogen is needed to react with 5 dm cubed of nitrogen? Therefore, if we have 5 dm cubed of nitrogen, we must have 3 times the amount of hydrogen, so the hydrogen we would need would be 15 dm cubed, and this would make 10 dm cubed of ammonia. We can also do this to look at the reactants in a reaction, for example in complete combustion. Here we have the equation for complete combustion, methane plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide and water. Question is what volume of oxygen is required for the complete combustion of 40 grams of methane? We need to pause the video at this point and then when you come back we will look through the answer. So the first thing we need to do is work out our moles of methane. We're given the mass, which is 40, and we can work out the MR, which is 16. Carbon is 12, each of the hydrogens is 1. 40 divided by 16 gives us 2.5 moles. From the reaction, we can see that for every 1 mole of methane, we have 2 moles of oxygen. We don't have 1 mole of methane, we have 2.5 moles, so therefore 2.5 moles of methane must equal 2 times 2.5 for oxygen, so we would have 5 moles of oxygen. If we have 5 moles of oxygen, and we presume this is at room temperature and pressure, 
then the volume of oxygen would be equal to our 24 dm cubed times by our 5 moles, giving us a volume of 120 dm cubed. Here are two final example questions. Again, I want you to pause the video and attempt to work these out. For question one, we're looking at marble chips which are made of calcium carbonate, CaCO3. What volume of carbon dioxide will be released when 500 grams of CaCO3 is reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid? And for number two, magnesium will react with hydrochloric acid. What volume of hydrogen would be produced if we reacted one gram of magnesium with excess acid? For question one, the answer is 120 decimeters cubed. The MR of calcium carbonate is 100 and carbon dioxide is 44. When we divide both of them by 100, we end up with 1 for CaCO3 and 0.44 for carbon dioxide. Timesing them both by our known mass of 500, we end up with our 500 grams of calcium carbonate and 220 grams of carbon dioxide. Working out our volume by doing mass over MR times 24, we do 220 divided by 44 and then timesing that by 24 to give us our answer of 120 decimeters cubed. And for our second question, the volume of hydrogen, we would form one decimeter cubed of hydrogen. The MR of magnesium is 24, of H2 is 2. Dividing both by 24 gives us 1 and 0 0.083. Timesing both by 1, which is our grams, we end up with our 1 gram of magnesium and our 0 0.083 grams of hydrogen. Working out our volume, we do our mass divided by our MR, so 0 0.083 divided by 2, and then we times this by 24 to give us our volume of 1 dm cubed. This concludes today's video on calculating gas volumes. In the next video, C3.8, we will look at reversible reactions and the Haber cycle.